Good day, um, my name is Nandi Fleming. I've been asked to speak to you today a little bit about stress and the emotional and immune responses of the body during times of stress and especially during COVID-19. And I think before we start, it would be good for us just to take some time to offer a word of prayer to the Lord and ask his presence with us before we start. Let us just bow our heads for a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, in the world that we live in today, especially as we look at the things that are happening in the world, so many disasters, wars and, and strife, and, and we see you know diseases all around and this COVID-19 that we are currently facing in this world pandemic, Lord, we realize that there's just so much stress that we have to deal with. There's so many hurts, so many pains, so many things that are going wrong. And, and Lord, we really don't know what to do. We, we are without words. We are without answers. And therefore, we need you. We need you, our sovereign guide, our shield, our protector, our strength in times of trouble. And Lord, we, we need you to help us to go through these times successfully. And Lord, as we're going to be looking at this topic of stress, may we see through your word what you have recommended. May we see through the, the things that have been given to us, Lord, how we can reduce our stress and how we can live more healthfully while we are still faced with trials and things all around us. Bless us now, Lord, as we open your word is my prayer in your name. Amen. So I'd like to read for you a verse before we start out of the book of John, chapter 14, verse 27, which is a promise that the Lord gives us. He says, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. So as I said, we're going to talk a little bit about stress and how it affects you um, when you go through stress, short term stress or long term stress. And I'd probably start off by asking a question. Have you ever felt like life is just too much? Like there's just too many things that you have to worry about and the world around us is filled with so many stresses and pressures that are building up, responsibilities that are becoming more demanding and are heightening, expectations that are shooting through the roof. And on top of, of it all, we are currently facing and dealing with this worldwide pandemic and the effects that come together with it. So many things that have rippled because of COVID-19. It is not just an illness. It is not just a disease disease, but it has affected so many aspects and so many areas of our lives, which will obviously cause stress. And despite all of this, despite the fact that there are so many stresses, that life is not the same as it used to be, for example, to our, for our parents and our grandparents and the generations that have passed, despite of all these pressures increasing, we still have the same bodies that people had many years ago. And what do I mean with this? Our mental and our physical capacity to deal with stress hasn't magically increased over the past decade. Um, yet somehow you are expected and society's expected, our jobs expected, and sometimes we expect it of ourselves to be able to successfully navigate through the increased amount of stress that the world is currently placing on top of us. Um, there's a load, a load that is so much heavier that we have to carry. Um, and, and, and sometimes the pressures of this modern paced, fast paced kind of lifestyle just becomes too much for us to carry. But this is the world that we live in. So I guess the question is, how are we going to cope? How are we going to uh, cope and manage and, and successfully move through this ever amounting stress that is just building up and becoming heavier and heavier to carry? There's a saying by Sidney Harris that says, when you do not have the time to relax, that's when you should relax. And this is just one of the first tips that I could give to the stresses of life to say when stress increases, a lot of times what happens is that we find ourselves without time. We find that there's just not enough time in the day to face and to deal with everything that needs to be dealt with. And then we do not take time for ourselves, for our health and for ourselves in personal devotion and time with God. And this is exactly the time when we should take time to just relax and sit down and calm down and take the time that we need to go through life and the things of life. 
There's another thing in the lives of Christians that we will probably struggle with as well when it comes to stress. And that is that we are warned as God's church that in the last days, and even while we are not living yet in the last days, that God's church on earth will face many persecutions and trials. The Bible says that if they hated Jesus, they will hate those who follow him as well. And so social stress also can surmount because of the, the, the beliefs that we hold dear. And stress is really becoming a reality for every single person in this world today. But the Bible tells us in Psalms 34 verse 19, a beautiful promise. It says, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them out of them all. Isn't that a beautiful promise that God says that although you have many afflictions and many stressors that will come, God will deliver you out of them all. And this is one of the, the, the most important things that we need to remember is, is that God is our refuge and our shield, our ever present help in time of trouble. But let's look at stress and a little bit about what stress is exactly. The definition of stress really is, is that it is an emotional, it is a cognitive, in other words, our thoughts are affected by it, and a physical reaction to increasing pressure, pressure that comes towards us, pressure that ever increases. And this affects our social health as well as our spiritual health. It affects our bodies, it affects our minds and our emotions. And in order for us to truly understand stress, we need to make a differentiation between stress and anxiety because a lot of people use these words interchangeably. Um, I am stressed, I am feeling anxious, but they really are not the same thing. So I'm going to use a term to explain these two and to just differentiate between them. You see, stress or what we would like to term normal anxiety should not be confused with anxiety disorders or what we call abnormal anxiety. So just think of it as normal anxiety and abnormal anxiety. The one is stress and the one is um, anxiety disorders. Um, stress is the response of the body to an actual threat, something real, some real pressure that is coming um, and is stressing you out. In other words, stress has a direct cause. Whereas the anxiety or the anxiety disorders, abnormal anxiety, doesn't always have a specific focus um, or something specific that you can pinpoint and say, this is the reason for it. Um, and we're not going to look extremely a lot today at abnormal anxiety, but you've got to differentiate between the two in order to understand what we're going to be talking about now. So an illustration of how these two are different comes from stress kind of works like a house alarm. It goes off when somebody breaks in or enters into your promises, uh, your premises, climbs through the electric fencing, breaks through the door. So there's a real threat and therefore the alarm goes off. Abnormal anxiety, however, is like a faulty house alarm that keeps going off even though there's no burglar, there's no breaking or entering, there's nothing really that has triggered the alarm to go off, but it goes off. And this is really what happens inside the bodies of people. Um, stress is because there really is something that is stressing us out abnormal anxiety or anxiety disorders happens even though there is no burglar or no apparent reason for this anxiety alarm to go off inside of you. So stress is an alarm and anxiety is alarm. Um, but we got to differentiate between them. So the example of stress or normal anxiety, um, just to give you a little bit of a story, just to demonstrate a little bit further of how it would work, is that if you are driving down the highway in your car and you see a truck coming behind you in your rear view mirror and it's speeding down upon you and you realize that it's not going to stop, it's going to crash into you, um, that is when you will experience stress. When this truck is not applying its brakes and it's speeding down towards you, your body will go over into a natural stress response. And this happened to me a few years back. Um, while I was driving on the highway from Pretoria to Johannesburg, um, the traffic all of a sudden slowed down and came to a complete stop. And I, I managed to stop in time. I didn't, you know, hit anybody or have to swerve or anything like that. But as I stopped, I looked into my rear view mirror very quickly just to see if any cars behind me were coming and if they noticed that the traffic had stopped. And sure enough, a truck was speeding down onto me. 
And I realized that this truck had not yet noticed that the traffic had stopped. And I realized that he was not going to use his brakes in time. And within a split second of realizing this, I put my car in gear. I accelerated out of the lane into the lane next to me. And I got out of the, the space of where the truck was going to be when he finally did come to a halt. And sure enough, um, he did not apply his brakes properly. And he stopped exactly where my car would have been had I not moved out of the way. Now, this is what I did. This was my reaction action to a stressful situation and every single person when they go through stress they go through a, 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 a bodily reaction where they act on the stress but the stress affects the body so much more um, uh, for example how did I feel what did I experience emotionally within my body my physiological response how did I experience that when this happened well let me tell you um, I can tell you that my heart was beating out of my chest I was sweating I was out of breath I was hyperventilating um, I was trembling, I was shaking, I felt extremely nervous and scared. Um, and I shifted into a very high level of alertness when this happened. Um, but I was alive. And even though the threat was now removed, the truck had come to a still stand and I was on the other side of the lane and I was completely safe. It took a little bit of time for my, my bodily reactions to calm down. My heart rate eventually returned back to normal. My breathing slowed down. I stopped sweating. I stopped shaking um, because it wasn't such a big incident. And what do I mean with it? wasn't such a big incident. You see, no harm came to me. And, and depending on how much harm comes to you, it will take a little bit longer for the stress response to reduce. Um, because remember what we said, stress is a bodily, emotional and cognitive response to an actual threat. Now, if the threat didn't hurt you, then you will calm down much quicker. The stress response, the alarm that goes off will stop quicker. Uh, when the stress has, or when the, the harm or the incident has really hurt you, then it's going to take longer for stress to be removed from the body. Um, just so that you can differentiate between those two. So what are the things that cause stress in our lives? You know, the real threats. What are the pressures and stress or situations that trigger, trigger normal anxiety? What are the pressures that you experience? Um, there's a saying that says, don't stress the could haves. If, you, if it should have, it would have. In other words, what it is talking about here in this saying is it's basically saying that don't allow the past things to stress you out because what should have happened would have happened if it could have happened. Um, so it's a cute little saying just to, to help us to understand that the past stresses of the past, there's nothing that we can do about it. But, but to just realize that it's not just the things of the past that stress us out, but sometimes there are things in our current situation that stress us out because it's the past, the present, and sometimes even the future that causes um, pressure and stress in our lives and examples at the moment that we might be struggling with during COVID-19 is the fear of illness or maybe real illness if you have perhaps taken ill if a family member or a friend has taken ill um, if somebody has died there has been significant amount of job loss that has taken place um, and because of this of course you know people's income and and their their needs have been cut short you know they don't have as much money for food as they used to have some have been left destitute without jobs, without a home. They had to move back into, you know, their parents' homes or, or into family members' homes. And this has affected their relationships. And now there's more people in one house and the stresses are rising up. Um, so there's many things that really could have happened with this pandemic. Um, some people ha have to have returned back to work and now they're worried that they're going to get infected. Um, but they have to go back to work in order to make a living. Their children, some of their children had to go back to school. Um, some children have caught COVID-19 at school and, and there's just so many stresses that have happened because of COVID-19. Um, people's routines have changed um, and, and because of the routine change, this has added pressure. Some people have said that they're more busy than ever before. They thought they were going to be at home and have a relaxed little holiday, but they're not having a relaxed holiday. And you can really identify what some of your current stresses are. And the worst thing about stresses is that it's not just the stress of COVID-19 that you have to carry, but many of us have had stress even before COVID-19 came, even before all the, 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 the trials and tribulations of this pandemic came into our lives, we already had stress. And now we see the ever increasing effects of stress in our bodies. Um, and how it really happens and, and how it affects us is it affects us from internally as well as externally. I've mentioned some of the external stress 
stresses that we experience. But you see, stress is not just because of external circumstances, but stress can come from internal circumstances as well. And what do I mean with this? Well, our own thoughts, our own expectations, our attitudes and uncertainties and worries can cause a lot of unneeded stress for us. And, and so there really is things that we can do with internal stress. External stress, we don't always have a lot of control over because it's sort of out of our hands. But internal stress, what happens within your mind and the things that you think and feel, that is something that we can look at. We can look at our irrational fears. You see, sometimes we fear things about the future that, that we don't even know if it's really going to happen or not happen. I'm not saying don't be cautious. I'm not seeing, saying don't be careful. But don't add extra stress into the mind and into the heart and the emotions that is not necessary. Um, especially if it's irrational. And then our expectations, you know, sometimes we expect life to go a specific way, but it doesn't always work out the way that we want. This can cause a lot of stress. Our attitude, you know, being very negative and pessimistic um, can cause a lot of stress for us. Always seeing the cup as half empty as opposed to half full. And then obviously the uncertainty of the future. Many people have said we don't know what the world's going to look like after COVID-19. Um, and we worry about those kind of things. And there's a saying by Low Holt that says it's not the load that breaks you but it's how you carry this load and this is very interesting because basically what Low is saying is he's saying yes external factors can cause stress but sometimes the reason that we have more stress than what we need to is because internally we are not managing to carry the stress in an appropriate manner we are not doing it in the way that is that is more rational you know maybe looking at our expectations whether they are irrational and our attitude you know being negative or being positive or worrying too much about the future. Even the Bible speaks about our future worries. It says that do not worry about tomorrow because tomorrow has enough of its own worries. Only live today. Um, find those things which are stressful today and deal with them today. So stress really does affect us quite severely. Biologically within our bodies, as I said, it causes our hearts to, um, to, to, to beat faster. It escalates our heart rate. You can experience things like, you know, trembling hands or your legs, sweaty hands, um, excessive sweating or perspiration, hot flushes where your face becomes flustered, a trembling voice, feelings of being frightened and anxious and feeling overwhelmed. Um, and this can also sometimes lead to some symptoms that you experience within abnormal anxiety. Many of the symptoms and biological responses of stress is basically identical, it's identical to that of abnormal anxiety. And this is why sometimes it's so difficult to differentiate between the two. Other symptoms that you might experience during the stressful time is um, headaches, struggling to sleep because of all the stresses and things that you are worried about. Um, Body aches, you can literally experience pain in your back, your shoulders, headaches, things like that. Feeling lightheaded, um, struggling with concentration or irritability, feeling that you have no energy. And then even some people experience what's called low libido, not having a, a good sex drive. Um, and nobody said that everybody is going to experience the same type of symptoms. This is something that you need to understand, that just because there are certain symptoms that is coming from stressful situations doesn't mean we're going to experience it in the same way. Our bodies are going to respond differently. Our thoughts and emotions are going to be different within the stress response. But then also the things that are stressing me out is not necessarily the things that are stressing you out. You might be worried about finances or your studies, where I am not worried about my studies at all, but for example, Example, my relationship is busy stressing me out or my work situation is stressing me out so to realize that not just because one person perceives something as stressful doesn't mean the person next door to them are going to perceive it as stressful as well and this is important when it comes to relational stress because a lot of times we add relationship stress into the workings because how can you be so nonchalant about this very stressful situation and just to recognize that we do not all have the same types of stressors and then, of course, also we are affected in our emotions as well as in our thought patterns. Um, emotional responses can be that you experience a, a level of depression, um, feelings of anger, you know, because there's nothing that's in your control, feeling irritated and restless, you know, not knowing whether you're coming or going, the feelings of being overwhelmed, 
unmotivated or unfocused. And then your thoughts, you know, if you have racing thoughts, constantly thinking, trying to get yourself out of these stressful situations, um, sometimes having problems with your memory, not remembering things and not being able to concentrate. Um, and then sometimes even making bad decisions because your mind is not able to concentrate or think clearly within this surmounting stress that you are experiencing. Um, and what happens in the mind and in the emotions has been shown to directly affect your body and your bodily health and that you can become ill because of this. Um, they did some tests um, on medical students um, who undertook a three day exam period and they showed that the stress levels that these students experienced during this three day period um, resulted in them having fewer natural killer cells within their body um, so that they could no longer longer fight tumors and viral infections as effectively as before. Just because of this three-day stress of exams, um, they almost stopped producing um, immunity-boosting gamma. In other words, they, 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 they lacked certain things which their body would produce under normal circumstances that would boost their immunity, and now their immune system was down as opposed to when they were not writing exams and they were not under stress. Um, also, it in, it, they experienced infection because their fighting T, T cells did not respond as it usually did. So basically, if you just look at the, 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 the effects that is happening within their bodies, basically the whole bodily system is now weakened because of the stress. Uh, another thing that happens with chronic stress is that the stress hormone called cortisol is released. And when cortisol remains within the bloodstream, it is extremely bad for the heart and people can start having heart problems and they can be at a higher risk of heart disease, heart attacks. Um, so we really need to realize that stress is something that needs to be addressed. The surmounting stress that we find ourselves under because we're taking on more responsibility, because we struggle to put boundaries in place, because we struggle to say no, is really killing us. It is destroying our health. It is affecting us emotionally. It is affecting our body. Bodies, it is affecting our relationships and, and where we can, we should really work hard at working on the internal factors of stress and where we can reduce the external stressors, we should also work at doing this. So as I said, there are really two types of stress. That is the good anxiety or normal anxiety and the abnormal anxiety. But there is also with normal anxiety, two types of normal anxiety. The one is called eustress, which is a good stress. And then we have a bad kind of stress, which is distress. So eustress is a good kind of stress, which kind of motivates you. For example, you might feel stressed when you're getting married or when you're having a new baby um, or when your project has a deadline that is coming up or moving into a new home because there's excitement excitement and the possibility of a new promotion going to a new work. These things also cause stress, but they're good stresses in the sense of that they put you into gear and they get you motivated and they get you going. Um, James chapter 2 verse 3 talks about this kind of stress, I believe, where it says that various trials will work for you and it will help you by testing you for your faith will produce steadfastness and let this steadfastness have its full effect that you may be perfect and complete lacking nothing but also there is something called bad stress so although the bible says you know consider it pure joy brothers when you face trials of many kinds because it grows you um, the bible is here mentioning that there are trials of many kinds there's the one that grows you and there's the one that destroys you and and we see that this bad stress the distress can really you know cause hurt to a person but if we remain steadfast under trial says james 1 verse 12 it says, blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial, for when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life, which God has promised to those who love him. This, however, does not mean that you should allow unnecessary stress into your life. You see, because just because the Bible says stress can grow you and that there is such a thing as good stress doesn't mean we must now say, "Woo, stress, come on board. There are certain times when we take on extra responsibility, which the Lord has not placed on us. When we overwork ourselves, when we don't learn to put boundaries in place and say no to surmounting responsibility. Um, 
And we need to take care of our health. The Bible tells us that our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit and we need to care for it. And when stress um, destroys the body, then we need to start looking at reducing that stress where possible. Um, so it can be bad for you. And the Bible gives us some tips on how to respond to, to stress. Um, stressors, um, you know, what we should do, we should look at the things that we can't change and how to deal with them. So external factors that you can't change, circumstances beyond your control, this is what you need to do. We need to pray for the courage to accept these things. Take them to God. Matthew 19 verse 26 says, but Jesus looked at them and said, with man, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. So the things that seem impossible to you that you cannot change, take them to the Lord in prayer and leave them in his hands. Um, and then remember that nothing is permanent. You know, you might be under a stressful situation that you can't change right now, but don't stress yourself too much because no matter how bad the situation is, it will change. It will change. Nothing remains permanently. First Peter 1 verse 6 says, um, in this you rejoice, though now for a little while. You know, for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved with various trials. The Bible is telling us clearly that for now, maybe for a short time, you might be going through a trial, but it is not going to last. Things will change, but there are things that we can change. And this is really what we need to look at in order to reduce stress. We need to learn to plan. We need to learn to take rest, to get exercise, to laugh and have fun and play more. And, and when we are sad, we need to give ourselves permission to cry. Um, there's a saying that goes talking about planning better. It says the key is not to prioritize what you have scheduled, but to schedule your priority, says Stephen Covey. Sometimes we have so many things on our schedule, but they're not priorities. They're not important, really. And we need to learn to prioritize and then put those things within our schedule. Um, there's a saying that goes, you can do anything, but not everything. Does that make sense? And a lot of us, just because the Bible says I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, doesn't mean you must try and do everything. Um, there are some things that just is too much for us because we are only human. We need rest and our body needs rest. And, and this is really that what we need to do. And this is why the Bible has instructed us to take the seventh day Sabbath as a day of rest. Um, it says where there is a lack of rest, there is an abundant abundance of stress. And, and this is really true, and I'm sure that you can attest to this. So we need to plan better. We need to rest more and exercise. Exercise is one of the most effective ways to burn away um, those bad stress, stress released hormones within the body. When cortisol is still in the body, when adrenaline is still in the body after a stressful situation or a stressful day, exercise reduces that stress release or stress response within the body and also releases certain happy hormones that will counteract um, the stress response um, endorphins they call them and then sometimes you need to just take some time to do something which is enjoyable take some time to do a hobby you know paint sing build something um, laugh a little bit have fun and play they say body needs laughter as much as um, it needs tears you see, yes, tears and sorrow might help us and push us, but we need laughter. We need joy. Both of these are cleansers of stress. When we cry, it removes the stress. When we laugh, it removes the stress. And when we are sad, we need to sometimes give ourselves time and permission to take time aside, to go and sort through the hurt, to go and deal with the hurt and pray to the Lord to help us to deal with the surmounting stresses of life. First Peter 5 verse 10 says, and after after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, confirm, strengthen and establish you. So my prayer for you today is this, that despite the chaos that is going on around us in COVID-19, that we will take the time to deal with stress, deal with stress in the tips that has been given, but deal with stress in the fear of the Lord and taking it to him and asking him to help us to do those things which is necessary to reduce the stress in our lives. And then to find the calm within the chaos. This is really what, what we should be doing. To say, I can take the time to rest like Jesus did in the little boat. When the disciples were freaking out because 
the storms that were raging around them, Jesus took time to rest. He left his sorrows and the concerns of life in the hands of the Lord and his Father, and he went and he took the necessary physical rest that was needed for him. So if you need a little bit of physical rest, take some time to rest physically. Take some time to exercise, to work out those negative hormones in your body, and so that the Lord can replenish you and strengthen you, as he has promised in the verse that we started off with, where he says, my peace I leave unto you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives, but do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. This is my prayer for you today. As the stresses of life are coming, may the Lord's peace be with you as he walks this road with you. May God bless you. Amen.